Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, the Ventacell is upon us, and it's as gold as ice. Then Bridge Constructor Portal gets a day one Linux release. That's cool. Unfortunately, it does have an issue or two. In a move to further consolidate ownership of all media, Disney starts to put some of their old catalog on Steam. And you can now play Phantasmagoria without having to install Windows 95, which is a shame because that was the only truly scary part of that game. Road Redemption is approached by a publisher, a porn game publisher to be precise, and AMD releases the sauce to some drivers. These are not the drivers you're looking for. Mm. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the Nightmare Fuel for the 200th and 79th time. I'm coming up on Doctor Who Day, so a lot of people are out doing their things, but we're still here, giving you the love joined every week by the man who is actually back in Canada, One Master Sveng, formerly of Finlandia, and all the way from the island, Pedro Mateus, chilling out doing that, joined... By Chat Realm Dynamic in our IRC and Discord Chat Realms, helping us form that last little special bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. J Baby, since you're back from Finlandia, what, what's new? Did you see the Star Wars? Uh... I, I I did see the Star Wars. We talked about that a little bit in the uh, pre pre Super Sojourn. You can you know take a take a gander, take a listen to that if you're <laughs> one of the one of the Patreon folks. Yeah, no, I'm I'm all recovered from jet lag. Uh, Google Hangouts keeps crashing on me, which is great, fantastic fun. <laughs> um, as I as I stra- as I scramble, I don't know, Pedro, what the fuck's up with your life? No one cares. Ben, what are you up to? Uh, really? I'm basically waiting for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to have strangers here. Uh, they go to school with Nori. That's basically all I know. So, yeah, they're going to be coming over. We're going to have some Christmas Eve uh, dinner, supper thing going. To, that's That's going to happen. So I'm 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 not up on this Christmas thing. Do you guys actually like do the transubstantiation thing and like do Christmas cannibalism? I've I've I was I've always been unclear about that. No, no. <laughs> no cannibalism, unfortunately. Uh we're just going to have some cutfish instead, because Portuguese tradition. Right. Really, really fitting into British uh society there, man. Um Mm-hmm. <laughs> cod. Cod, cod, cod is the most British fish. It is kind of fun. Um, over here in Vinlandia, uh, Charter gave us some more speed, kind of not not useful. We finally have a um, hundred plus megabits down, and still point five, which is really point seven up. And no matter how much money I attempted to throw at them, Thursday or yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, they're like nah. Uh, that's all you got, man. Deal with it. I also bought some super fancy 15 pound capacity Velcro because of a thing Maddie inflicted upon us, which I'm looking forward to seeing oh, whether yes. or not it sticks. <laughs> that will be an adventure. But one thing we stick to every week is beating the holy hell out of one steamy horse. You know, th- this week we I decided to make it a little sp- festive because now when you smack the horse with a stick, jingle bells plays, and <laughs> may- may- maybe a little bit of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer if he's feeling a little nasty. It's the steam. Linux. Update. So right. lawsuits. It's on fire. No, no, it isn't. No, man, uh, everything's fine. Quit worrying about it. Just because Space Australia has uh, reaffirms that Valve misled gamers, $2.3 million redo fine has been upheld. This is from 20, well, a lawsuit that was lost in 2016, oh, all the way back in 2014. Filed a lawsuit mm-hmm. against Valve alleging that the lack of the refund policy on Steam was in violation of the, co- which anti consumer, it was, 100%. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'm I'm personally surprised one that for even the hot damn second I guess Valve I don't even know why they fought this it's like, yeah okay because you couldn't if you're new to Steam back in the old days two years ago 
You couldn't get a refund if you bought. The, well, you could. Hopefully, if you crossed your fingers and you did it on a Tuesday after 4 p.m. and you, you didn't you have, have to, fish that evening, you could get a refund <laughs> maybe a month later. But now we have a refund system in place. And in, in, in my in my experience, you just have to be willing to deep throat and tickle their taint a little bit, hmm. and then you'll get the full refund. <laughs> or uh, that, that, say that, that my if uh, you bought The Witcher Two on Linux, and uh, the guys behind you know CD Projekt Red said, "Yeah, no, uh, here's your money back. Thank you." But uh, the, <laughs> the the big news here is that. These guys were fined about 2.3 million Australian dollars, mm -hmm. which in which is probably mm -hmm. about 2.3 Canadian dollars, which in the U.S. is about 350. About 350. So, look, yeah, I mean, so the real question is, like, is that even worth it? Right? They've probably made more than three million Australian dollars, at least, well, as a consequence of that of that policy. Ab 100%. Absolutely, and I'm sure that policy, because you know, they're not Steam's not a jackass collective i'm sure that helped fuel the okay let's actually implement a refund mm -hmm. system a to let let's not make this a thing where everyone sues us but b i mean yeah ultimately for that amount what did they do they they, they started the venture cell what 20 25 minutes early then they're like okay that's paid for mm -hmm. um mm, yeah yep. it's, it's, it's and it's, it's not uh, this point. i don't think in this case specifically it's about the money it's probably more about the press because that seems to be what Valve cares about. They're still a private company. They're not publicly uh, traded. They don't have stocks. They don't have shares. They don't have anything like that. They are a fully, oh, a fully privately owned company. Mm -hmm. So they don't really need to yeah. care about that. But bad I, press I don't, I don't, I don't is still bad press. Yeah, and I mean, Steam is really concerned about their optics because, as we've seen with the Steam Machine debacle, they don't actually advertise. The majority of what they mm -hmm. do in terms of sales and promotion is either internal within the product or via word of mouth. So they kind of want to keep that image squeaky clean and positive in the mind of the filthy, unwashed masses that buy Steam games in Australia because they haven't invented showers there. All right, LGC Care, send your hate mail to Jordan at LinuxGameCast.com. So, Avor mentioned Steam, Venture Sale, ends January 4th at 1 p.m. Be there, be square, right up there with the Stick of Truth. 75% off, don't care. Mm -hmm. A lot of Linux love in this. Hollow Knight, you can grab it for nine eighty nine. That is a hell of a deal. Great game. We're going to be doing our top three, bottom three personal picks at the end of the year next week. That's definitely going to be a thing. Dying Light, seven. hey man. First game I refunded on Steam, Dying Light. Um, <laughs> Speaking of refunds. They have some really yeah, good you, deals you on the uh, <laughs> Steam controller, Steam Link combo for like 37, what, stinky American dollars. So, yep. so here, here's the here's the thing uh, here's the thing I have is that we, we had the autumn sale not too long ago, about a month ago, actually, or a month or two ago. It was in late October, early November-ish. Mm -hmm. And look at, at least looking at some of the games that I was interested in, there's not much in the way of difference in terms of discount. You might save a buck or two here or there, but nothing obscenely screaming, buy me, buy me! So, <laughs> unless maybe you're looking for a Steam Link. You know, you. Outside, of, outside of rounding up all the DLC that I didn't have for Borderlands 2, because I'm currently going through the game, I... no... I no. can't really say I was looking forward to this one. Uh, yeah, it does seem like the previous sale was, was like 20 seconds ago. I mean, if we're just going to be honest about it. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I looked. The, the only thing I saw that made me go, fuck, was GOG just had a sale and they had Mother Russia bleeds for three quid. It's like, ah, why not? Mm -hmm. Then, of course, it's on the vendor sale. It's like, I'm not going to buy it again, but I really want to buy it again because then it'll be in Steam. I don't have to keep track of it because Galaxy's never coming to Linux. Because fuck you, that's why. It's it's yeah. also been in like a million bundles too, so I don't know. Mm. But I, I don't know, Pedro, it's time for your participation trophy. Indeed. So, uh, the... Um... You know that Valve, uh, over the past year or so, uh, during last year's um, 
winter sale, they had the Steam Awards. And uh, for the first round, before like the actual winter sale, you got to nominate the games. And then when the winter sale came around, you got to vote for the games that were nominated. And that's all nice and dandy, I guess. And you get some trading cards as you vote for games. But uh, honestly, I would like to see the Linux community and everyone watching the show right here, right now. Only, please, 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 only vote for Linux games. I don't care if the developers supported Linux in the past. Uh, if that game that's on the poll doesn't have a Linux version, they don't get a vote. That's been my rule for the three days that oh, I've voted on, thus Pedro. far. Come on, Pe so, Pedro. You know somebody just like paused their Call of Dude Bros Too Spooky for You edition to go, no talks, no bucks, and went back to playing it. On I, I, I yeah. mean, you're, so, you're, uh, you're taking it a step further than I would have insofar as don't engage the stupid, silly bullshit. Well, yes, there is that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> admittedly. But, you know, they, they got to do something. And if it helps an indie game, a good indie game, get more notoriety. Like, I'd love to see Hollow Knight up in that business because I want some more Hollow Knight or something more from that team. Um, was it mm -hmm. Team Cherry that did that? Uh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, vote vote with that business if you like it. But uh, you might not be able to vote in China. Oh, oh yes. No. You see. No, you will not. Um, this, the Ch Ch China is free, democratic, and unrestricted in communications, and therefore you can't access the Steam community via the Great Firewall of China. It looks like that's pretty much what's happened. Um, if you're going through standard network access means, uh, and you are in the mainland China, uh, maybe possibly not in Hong Kong or Singapore or any of these other uh, protectorates. I will say it but... is not blocked in Hong Kong. I had that checked. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if, if you're if you're in one of those uh, pseudo capitalistic trade zones in China, might not affect you. If you're in the mainland, uh, then this definitely will. You are no longer able to access the scene community unless you go through something like VPN because. You know, you don't you don't want the the Chinese unwashed masses to get a taste of that freedom of communication that the Steam community is polluting the, the with the anti communism and the <laughs> I, I I don't know it, it's it's just one of these questionable decisions <laughs> that uh, a rather authoritarian government makes. So what do you think really like spun in with this? Was it just PUBG and everyone going, wait a minute, we all have to play this game. Some people playing Steam for the first time, not playing Steam. Well, Steam is a game itself. They would like you to think. Um, then getting in the community, the Chinese government, which we're, we're available in China, uh, until, Hey, T Tiananmen square. That was a thing that happened. Like 10,000 people died. Now we're not available in China. Um, <laughs> no, you, you just hear the, the, the Chinese. Strike <laughs> right. Uh, kind of spooky that this shit still goes on coming into 2018, man. You know? Yeah. Well, well, it's, I mean, I mean, they're, uh, they're rolling out that. That that Black Mirror type shit where they actually have like a rating system now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll, and we'll, we'll... looking at the Steam community, if you go to the Steam community right now, the usually the highest voted things are screenshots for anime booby games. So does China the not like anime boobies? Uh, oh, well, wait, the, no, the, it's the free they're, speech. They're you know, the free speech that crash. you see in the Steam community, which is just not existent. <laughs> Listen, they're, they're worried about the population crash, right? They they need people actually making babies and not wanking it to an anime boobs. <laughs> yes. So, 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 so send, send your hate mail to Pedro at Linux Steamcast. All right. So send your North Korean assassins to... Linux not Steam integration, not 7.2 released. What is it? Why should I be happy? Well, this is Solus, uh, basically I keep going. I like to play video games on my Linux distro, which actually his uh, his Linux distro. I, I got to take a little bit so, of contention uh, right here. He's got a new Unity black screen of Nope. That sounds like it might have been co-opted <laughs> from another saying called the Unity screen of Nope. Yeah, but then again, he does have a point because there are those Unity games. Uh, they, it used to happen a lot back in the Unity 4 days, and some Unity 5 games still do this, where if you start the game in full screen mode, I think the most egregious example was actually uh, Ballistic Overkill recently that did that with an update. 
uh, if you started the game in full screen mode, you couldn't see anything. And the reason behind that is because the game would attempt to uh, render itself on a not by not window. So that's not going to show anything. And it would be taking up the whole screen, rendering nothing. So it's good to see uh, uh, Ike and the rest of the Solus team going, look, we're trying to improve Steam. Uh, and basically what they did with this one specifically is they introduced a shim for the .config, Unity, 3D, whatever, prefs file. And whenever they see a game calling for that file, they redirect it to the general one that says, no, you're not going to start in full screen. If you want to start, uh, if you want to go full screen after you start, that's fine. But you're not going to start in full screen because we are actively trying to work around that bug. So, around them, man. yeah. Uh, around Batman, them. riddle me this. What happens when I'm in full screen mode? Am I getting windows? Yeah, you just big get picture, windows Big picture installed. mode, man. Is it going <laughs> to... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, in big picture mode, I'm assuming if the shim is in place, you will still get the... Uh, like little flicker of a window trying to show up, but the way that SteamOS specifically does it is that the compositor actively makes all the windowed uh, windows, the actual windows that show up. Windows, they say windows again. I'm gonna keep track. I got, I got a bet going. Windows. Yeah. <laughs> they actually scale those up to full screen so that will they will take up the whole thing. And uh, I guess so, this like, here, wouldn't here, affect here's, that. Here's the, here's, here's the here's the thing, though, because this this is all really neat. It is like addressing legitimate gripes within the people mm -hmm. actually, with people actually trying to game on Linux. But it's a workaround, and it it hurts my ops brain to see this kind of shit being implemented because they're hacks. This is just an app that's a hack. Oh, it's and completely really, leaked hacks, really, and all all that has 100%. to happen is Steam changes one thing in the matrix, and all this is for not. Exa exactly. Or we Unity. Really, or Unity. We Gene. really need to yeah. start addressing, we really need to push developers to start addressing the root causes of these issues. And, but uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. We, we live in the real world yeah, where people with are lazy developers, and don't do stuff that requires effort. Yeah. Developers don't seem to give a damn about Linux. Uh, Valve doesn't seem to give a damn about Linux. So this is the best thing we can get. It's the actual, uh, the actual team behind the distro that you're using. Going, no, we're going to make your experience as smooth as possible. And if we have to create dirty hack workarounds by intercepting library calls, we will fucking do it. Pedro, it do you know who does give a damn about Linux? Pornographers. Oh, well, yeah. It, they it, give it run, a damn about it, it anyone really servers, to right? uh, give them some clicks or some faps, as the case may be. So, Real Speaking Redemption. Speaking of anime movies. Uh, they posted... Yeah, they posted this bit of news on Steam uh, a couple of days ago. Well, actually a couple of weeks ago. And they said um, how anime porn is giving some games a second shot of success. And they give a little uh, description of um, Armor Blitz, which is the um, game published by Nutaku, which is a developer or a publisher of games, which if you already know about them, Hey, I'm onto you. Uh, but they are very much the uh, type of porny uh, visual novel type game that you see on Steam uh, nowadays. I, a lot, I, I, I actually. watch it for the plot, okay? Uh-huh, yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they approached the guys behind Road Redemption and they said, look, your game, it could be doing a hell of a lot better if only, if only... You put some anime boobies or cartoon boobies uh, in your cutscenes and give people more of a story. In then why don't why, the why don't they fucking bring it? Why don't they just make all the dudes topless? <laughs> well, listen, no, listen, I think they, they, they mean need to, actual, they need to have like a, uh, a modification boobies. for Unreal <laughs> for Unity that just adds point and click dong physics. There you go. Like so, here, here, here's the thing. This is this is interesting because. This, this company is actually investing in struggling studios and saying your caveat is you need to add a bunch of pornographic content to the game. And if it works, mm -hmm. I mean, good good for them, right? It enables developers to make games that they want to make, plus minus some tits, 
or some dicks or whatever. <laughs> um, but my, my, my main thing is people aren't really in the mood to pay for porn these days. So well, there's also that. I, I mean, you got to imagine there, there's got to be some level of novelty to it. But there's also like, oh, do you do you want to increase the chance of your game getting noped off steam by a factor of I don't know, because fuck you, that's why. Yeah. Then, then to that yeah. point, where the hell else are you going to sell it? Itch, Desura. Desura. Itch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Desura, where you, where, you, where, you, where you can get fucked by your computer game and then get monetarily. That, fucked no, I, I like that. It, it, it's not itchio. It's just itch, and you know, it's itch. <laughs> you got the itch from playing it's that all itch those you games. Gotta scratch, but, man. Well, 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 this is the, uh, this was specifically for uh, Road Redemption Two. It's based off Road Rash, which in itself could be a, the name of a pornographic game. Just saying. Mm, yes. Boy, that is definitely a thing. So, quick update to the Dying Light gun condoms. Yeah, that's right. They put a silencer in it. Uh, how to get it? Uh, you do more shit. Uh, unleash your rage silently. However, that works. You know, it's like uh, when you're back at your parents for the holidays and you need to rub one out. Do it on the download. Mm -hmm. Unleash your rage silently. A um, couple, uh, couple of basic minor gameplay fixes. Nothing big or new to really report on that. We just wanted to give it a quick mention. But um, yeah, it's just more gun singular. That's true. Warhammer we're, we're, updates. We're, What's it about? Yeah. The, well, they, it's it's more. I can't believe it's not Dota. They uh, added a couple more uh, elite units: uh, the Dreadnought, the Lift Adropa, and the Wraith Seer. Some new multiplayer maps and uh, some elite skins, basically turning uh, Dawn of War three into I can't believe it's not Dota, because uh, honestly, it's just more DLC for the redheaded stepchild of Dawn of War. Dawn of War two was way better than Dawn of War three, and they're trying to really push like, hey, you can play Warhammer ugh, Dota with this. So Barrel's <laughs> releasing this. Uh, I believe it's free. Uh, so you just get it if you have the game. Uh, so, I mean, yep. at, at least that, that's nice. But speaking of, speaking of free games, we got, we got, we got a lot of mods to talk about for Half-Life. Oh, all the hells. Oh, yes, yeah. we do. Let's bring it on. Uh, starting with ice, ice to meet you, Where's baby. Half-Life 2 expansion pack. That's right. It's a Half-Life mod too. Um, Half-Life 2 mod, I guess one should say that has actually been released. Unfortunately, uh, it's one I give absolute zero fucks about. And well, I think this is Half Life mm -hmm. One, though, isn't it? No, that's, that's Half Life the other Two. One. Oh, that's, that's one, the other one. one. No, yeah, that's Half Life yeah. Two. Yeah, I, I mean, nothing against this. I, I don't even know what it's really about. I just wanted to let everyone know that it's there. Uh, continue the incredible Half Life Two storyline uh, somewhere in the Antarctic, ice landscapes, underground bases, and all that fun stuff. Are, are we excited about this? Does this give us a little chubby or what? I, I mean, apparently you no. can shoot penguins in this, so that's a thing if you're into it. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's more Half Life Two content. If you if you enjoyed Half Life Two and you're looking for more shit to do in in that game with that aesthetic, then you know there you go. It's it's a relatively well received. But that's mod the thing; well. it doesn't so. It doesn't really seem to respect the aesthetic all that much because, oh, you get a new Mark 7 HEV suit, which is black and white. Listen, that's how you disguise yourself with the penguins. Haven't you seen Futurama? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, my bad. <laughs> all right, uh, thermonuclear cages coming to your face, man. Just yeah, th this is this is unfortunate because I would totally play a game of Half Life that just starred Nicolas Cage as mm -hmm. Gordon Freeman. Uh, mm -hmm. But this this is this is a mod for Half Life One. It is the Cage mod. It actually yes. looks pretty good for something Half Life One. Gold Source uh, keeps mm -hmm. it together. Uh, do I have any any notes about this? No, it's just um, a, it's a, it's a prison escape mod. So you get stuck in yeah. prison. You have a plunger. You can you can you can pretend to be a Dalek in the Half Life Two or <laughs> just Half Life One world. <laughs> just scr just scream exterminate as you suck the life out of people, uh, just like Stephen Moffat. Hey man, it's priced to sell it free, and if I ever do a stream of this, that's all I'm going to do is have exterminates blaring in the black. Move racist. In, uh, the, in, in, in the background, bang suggests, ladies and gentlemen, show titles. <laughs> it's a thing, man. Uh, 
I don't know. I, we might give this a spin, Ben, because it, it, it's single player, but uh, why not? It could you know, be we, fun, right? We, 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 could, we, could, we could backseat game then, and we can do like a... Yeah, uh, LGC 3K about it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's definitely a thing. Uh, break out of prison. Don't drop the soap. Right. Uh, but you know, every, every, everyone's favorite uh, children's trading card game has an update. Indeed. Uh, no, it's not Hearthstone for Linux. Uh, well, maybe fortunately, maybe unfortunately, who knows? No, this is just a little add-on to Hand of Fate Two. Uh, it's called The Dealer's Apprentice, and basically it's a teeny tiny little bit of free DLC that you get. Uh, if you've already finished the game, you get the dealer, you know, the dealer himself as a companion. Uh, and if you, uh, haven't finished the game, you also get some customization options. Uh, you also get, uh... There's a couple of new items, there's a couple of new cards, there's a couple of new things going on in there, nothing really big but you know introducing a whole new companion with the cards to go along with them that's pretty significant if you're still going through uh hand of fate 2 which i very much still am uh i'm probably going to finish borderlands 2 before i actually finish uh hand of fate 2 but uh no this is uh that's a good apparently, game apparently if you bought it apparently they're gearing Mark up to Tom. add some additional weapon types as well that could be interesting to sort of mm -hmm. inject some longevity yeah. in the game. oh hey here's so here's a new strategy for Rolling and ducking and rolling and ducking and attacking once and then rolling for five minutes yep. and attacking one more time. You know, I, I, I truly time. wish I had never discovered that method of turning the game into, okay, I, I can beat all the fighting segments. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the Dark Souls strat, man. Yeah. Yeah. Duck and roll. Duck and roll. <laughs> it's truly a thing. Uh, we got a couple of new games coming out on the Steams this week, new starting game. off with a day one release of Bridge Constructor Portal, not to be confused with Bridge Constructor Put another fucking word after that, and because they've done a lot mm -hmm. of them. This is uh, Bridge Constructing with Science. Uh, they got together and hung out. It, it's all right. I, I played a little bit of it today. Uh, it does have Portal's sense of humor to it, and uh, it's not as boring as I thought it would be. It's a little bit fucky, though, because I initially tried to play it with the Steam controller, and that was working swimmingly up until, like, the third map. Then it's like, nope, I don't register a way to do this button thing. And okay, so then you just play it with the uh, keyboard and gerbil. You build bridges so, over shit, physics puzzles. That's it. It's nine ninety nine, and uh, not a whole lot more to say about it. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna ask: Is it basically just like bridge constructor with portal shit, like I predicted a couple weeks ago? Well, I mean, what else could so. it be? Yeah, it, it does have fully voiced. Uh, uh, it's, it's called that. <laughs> Yeah. It's not bridge constructor uh, portal. Psych. Wink. Um, no, it turns out it's left for dead. That would actually be interesting. Transport zombies or survivors. This one is kind of interesting. If you've never played a uh, bridge constructor series, uh, this could kind of get you into it. It's fun little fucky physics things. And they've thrown the portal shit in there, which just turns things sideways. Um, it's something you can pick up, build some bridges. We'll probably looking at it next week. If we're going to be honest, is mm -hmm. uh, I didn't mind it. Price to sell to nine ninety nine. So even when it does handstands, yeah. And uh, yeah, big I, kudos to the developers for actually, you know, sending us keys. Thank you very much for that. We will definitely be uh, throwing some chairs at the game. It's just bridge constructor, though. As much as we wanted, like a Portal Three or just any Valve game with a three on the end, no, not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, no, well, not not until their card game comes out, but uh, maybe, maybe we should take a look at something else. This is uh, Bud E. Love Bomb and Satan's Lounge Band. I'm sorry, this is Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill slaps and beans. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, it's it's one of the it's a retro style side scroller. I get some Bayou Billy flashbacks when I when I look at this game. <laughs> Sort of reminds me with all like the varied gameplay segments, and you've got some multiplayer in here as well. Uh, I, I guess it could have, yeah. See, even even um, what is it? Even Bayou Billy had like a first-person shooter segment on the NES with the light gun. It was a thing, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's it's still in early access though. Arthur and through this in the oh, show. Oh shit! It's, it's even got a battle toad section. All right. Oh oh yeah. Um, there, it's still in early access, so so there are bugs. 
I just want to know if they're going to deliver their promised quota of slaps and or beams. I don't know, man. I'm just looking at the 1999 early access hipster pixel uh, brawler yeah. type game, local multiplayer only. So boo earns uh, on that business. Uh, 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 again, rule rule number one: are, is your does your game have multiplayer? Yes, it should have network multiplayer. Mm-hmm. End of end mm-hmm. of discussion. So that's the thing. Uh, Arthurian does point out uh, that he's got it. He's played with it. He's like, hold off, like give it a month, even if you're excited about the title like this. But our next three stories are all uh, just of the same uh, mouse because it's pre- pretty, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, Dis- Disney, um, you know, everyone's favorite media conglomerate that is slowly taking over the world. Uh, has decided to put some old uh, old platformers on the Steams. You got The Lion King and The Jungle Book. We got two stories here for The Jungle Book, which is a little weird, but whatever. I didn't want to break Ven's little Mickey Mouse thing. Uh, the original Lion King game, the, the platformer from Westwood, was actually really hard. So if you want to give mm-hmm. it a crack at seven bucks, uh, you can give that a shot. I never played The Jungle Book Um so I, I can't I can't comment on. Oh, how, I, I just did works. the um, blind, the Jungle Book. One of them should have been Aladdin. Yeah. Oh, okay then. Uh, uh, okay. Al- Aladdin as well. <laughs> so apparently these are all DOS box wraps, though. Yeah. Of the PC release. So keep yes, that in mind. Are. You're you're, you're going to be dealing with that SDL 1.2 goodness if you are not oh. a fan of that. Maybe wait until um. I guess I, I guess whoever, whoever is still working on that SDL 2 CL. Um, if, if that's even still uh, a thing, Mr. Alert. Mr. Alert did that. Uh, the only thing I'll say about this is I mean, they're like six bucks. Maybe we'll put them in your collection. Unfortunately, they were based on the DOS versions, which I, I are the infinite of infinite shit versions of mm-hmm. compared to the console ports from Genesis or SNES in the day. Mm. They were rubbish, they were bad. That goes. For a lot of games that originally premiered on the console, then you got the PC port later. And mm-hmm. we're talking, you know, mid to late 90s in that area right there and earlier, like Mega Man and DOS. Oh, the, wow. Oh, no, is it this, bad. Yeah, this, yeah, this would have this would have been like 93 to 95. So, yeah, early, yeah. early to mid 90s. And so, uh, I mean, if, 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 if you like the old games, you want you want to play them on Linux, you can get DOS rap versions off Steam. Um and yeah, uh, there, pricey, there's though. one final Just Disney. There's there's one final Disney property we got to talk about, and that is Maniac Lucas Mansion. Starts. Oh yes, yes we do. Maniac Mansion, the one and only. Uh, you probably played a little bit of it. Uh, what was it? Uh, the Day of the Tentacle. It has uh, Matic yeah, re- Mansion has a computer uh, built into it. The port. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, Maniac Mansion. If you were around in 1987 and you were old enough to remember because I was one year old at the time, so <laughs> I do not. Uh, if you remember this game, good on you. You can play it again. It's on Steam. It's Disney, so chances are it's probably go- also going to be another DOS box game. Uh, and it's, well, it's Maniac Mansion. <laughs> Really, that's really yeah, I, all there is to it. I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, Double Fine didn't get the rights to release like an enhanced version of it because they're all over that shit with like the Grim Fandangos and the Days of the yeah. Chronicles and whatnot. Yeah, that's one hundred percent a thing. Love... I'm kind of curious about the two hundred and fifty six megs of VRAM because I mean, didn't this thing run on like EGA back in the day? <laughs> Listen, man, Dust there's got to be some blow. software compatibility stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cheap. Yeah, I mean, it's like four bucks if you want to relive. You're like, this is going to be great. It's going to be like I remember it. It will never be like you remember it. And you'll play it, uh, it for it, 10 it will, minutes. It will, be, it will be exactly like you remember it. Except then you remember, wait, I'm an adult with responsibilities. I don't have time to fuck around with this. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, since we're lying to people, uh, let's just go ahead and tell them what's coming up next. Uh, coming up next, we're going to all install Windows, and you're going to watch as we drill our teeth out. No, we're, we're going to talk about some AMD drivers and the death of 32-bit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for Shet Realm Appreciation Hour. Well, it's not going to be an hour. Well, the actual show is probably going to be like an hour and a half, <laughs> if the last couple of weeks are anything to go by. But you lot, you lot keep making this possible. You lot keep, for some reason, you think that we are a good investment. 
I don't know why, but well, you're but listen, awesome. we're we're a, all of you. We're a more stable investment than Bitcoin, and that's about all we can say about this podcast. <laughs> but you know, if if you want to, you know, toss some bitcoins at us or any other particular currency, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, click the support the show button. We got oh, so many Amazon affiliate links. We got new egg affiliate links. We got an Amazon wish list that'll put you up on our fuck wall. You can be our fuck buddy. We got PayPal buttons. We got a Bitcoin address. It's great. You can also head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where you can get all sorts of nifty goodies like access to our Discord channel, some early show note access. You can even you can even participate in the making of the show. Get your name in the little Star Wars credits at the end. Bot access, RSVPs for game streams when we open it up. And hell, if you if you're even so inclined, you can give us money, and we'll just give you a seat on the show because we're hacks like that. Speaking of uh, hacks, got to thank uh, Mr. Doctor Hack, Doctor Mister Hack, Doctor Mister Hack, man. You better be, hey man. Listen, Doctor Mrs. the Monarch. What you don't understand is Doctor Hack is Hacker Man from Kung Fury. He just went on to further higher education, man. So, yeah, he's no longer a hacker man. He's a hacker doctor. Thank you very much. He is most certainly a hacker, <laughs> hacker doctor, but you gotta check this business out because uh, we got our buddy Frank here. You, you want to be one of uh, Frank's uh, beauties? One of those things? Because there's a new name on here, Dan W. He hooked us up off of our wish zone with a blaster, a sound blaster. It's not the new sauce because that's not what we use our wish zone for. It's not for like, oh, we want some super, we want shit that works because we're trying to make this a better show for mm-hmm. everyone. I want to thank Frank for holding that fine upstanding cannibal wall. I really dig it because when I come down here in the mornings, I look at this shit and I'm like, oh, shit, son, this is a team effort. You know, it kind of motivates you to do that business, but you do get to send in a little bit of a um, note with anything on the wish zone, which we always promise to read, and I hold on to all of these like I shit you not. I do. We should we should make like a little mural. <laughs> uh, Dan W. says, Christmas bonus was pretty good this year. Wanted to finally give something back as a thank you. Uh, all right, that works. Uh, for what you do, have some more complexity for the audio noodles to sort out. Pretty easy to install. I kind of dug it. And uh, hey, if anybody's wondering, we can say the X5 5.1, the installation process under Linux. Plug it in. You're done. It will sort you. But does- does it have the same warmth as like a 32-bit Ooh. PCI bus? Mm, no, but it does sound a lot, lot better, which that's kind of a throwback to way back when we recorded probably the first year and a half, almost two years of the show on a PCI Sound Blaster AW64. So that was definitely the thing. Also want to uh, throw a little love to Maddie. We're going to be showing off some stuff because <laughs> I sent oh, yeah. Pedro a text. I was like, you know, Pedro... Pedro will attest this. Is like, I got to quit mentioning which particular items on our wish zone will cause me the most pain. Because Maddie's like, yo, check that wish list. So the Euphoria, he picked us up. And uh, that's going to be awesome. Because we're going to be able to put a lot of new shit in Obey Me mode. And that's going to be the last major chunk of our audio chain. So everyone, uh, all patrons, plus Maddie, eh, you'll be getting a tour of how everything works and i'll make sure that is posted for the patrons mm-hmm. and everybody take a look we, at it. We, thank we, you so we much call it, we call it david Carradine mode it, but uh, let's <laughs> let's talk about uh, let's talk about some video drivers it's news time indeed it's the news as you'd expect that's what you said so, when you opened uh, NVIDIA, well, not NVIDIA, AMD. Sorry. Jesus, get your uh, shit right. I'm so used to just having <laughs> NVIDIA drivers good, good old starting AMD the news NVIDIA. off. Uh, that, no, it's actually AMD, uh, which uh, they were recently partnered up with Intel, but that's not what this is about. This is the uh, GPU open initiative that they started a while back, and now they're actually putting out some of the actual drivers, namely... The AMD VLK, that's the, their own Vulkan driver. So if you are uh, looking to, say, improve your uh, Vulkan implementation in whatever video game you happen to be working on, now you can have a look at uh, how AMD GPUs actually use the Vulkan drivers because you have access to all the sauce. And I was looking through the list and I saw, oh, 
Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> it's the abstraction layer that Linus shouted at AMD over and then just put him down. You know, in the traditional hey, man, listen, you can talk some about smack about, about that, but if you're AMD and you're like, fuck it, well, this shit's getting in one way or the other, this is a way to do it. Yeah, it's it's going to cause yep. some interesting fragmentation. I'm curious if some of the distros are going to actually uh, nut up and try to implement this, much to their chagrin. Uh, but the, what uh, what's kind of interesting is if you click on that GitHub link, um, they have uh, Vulkan support all the, going all the way back to the HD 7000 series, so mm -hmm. you don't even need to be on the new naming scheme to benefit from these Vulcan drivers if you're so inclined. But hopefully, hopefully what will happen is the Mesa dudes will strider a bunch of this code and make Rad V super awesome. Oh yeah. I think that I think that's the main hope here. Um Yeah, I, I can see that it's AMD think not think like, listen, here it is. Go. And yeah. really good on AMD for doing that because it is the open source version the equivalent mm, needs some work and this this it's going to be usable man i mean especially i think uh 415 rc3 pretty much kind of sort of almost works out of the box with vega mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it might be a so, viable piece of kit in the very near future mm -hmm. i'm i'm not sure if uh mesa has fully caught up with that though but again hopefully you know, they can t steal a bunch of this code and get that all nice yeah. and working. But then it's the mm -hmm. end times. The The epoch is almost over. What are we going to do? Man, check this business out. NVIDIA is ending GPU driver support for 32-bit operating systems. I can hear the <gasps> cries of panic. Oh, no. Because, listen, man, let's just be honest. If you're running 32-bit system, you probably don't have a card current enough to justify needing anything more than stable in your system. So you can probably just chill the hell out. You're not worried about it. Because, yeah, you have dual DVI. That's your output and some S video because that's still a thing in your life. However, I'm almost 100% positive people are going to start bitching about their seven year old video cards and their 10 to 15 year old systems not being able to support anymore because hashtag re. I mean, seriously, man. Um, I, mean, I mean, you can just use Nuvo at that point. You're. You're on the NVIDIA legacy drivers anyway, Probably, so there's, there's yeah. again, just stick on the open source drivers. You know, actually, maybe help improve them, because Nuvo needs your help. There are a bunch of crazy people trying to take on an impossible mm -hmm. task, mm -hmm. and you know how much we love that kind of shit over here at LGC. Um, and here, and here's the thing. We're about 18 years out from that Unix time bug. <laughs> yeah, let's let's uh, let's stick a fork in 32-bit, because I, I think it's done. We're, do we're done. It is done, and there's that and, one person, but... You know, Pedro, go. I'm trying to build in that one second delay it takes now for you to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thing with this is 64-bit. Uh, that's all well and good. That's what most of us are running nowadays. Uh, I still have that uh, T42 uh, ThinkPad. It still runs 32-bit. That's all it can do. But it, but it has an AMD GPU, so that's current pointless. day video games. Yes. Yes, it mm -hmm. does. Uh, but um, the dropping 32-bit from the NVIDIA drivers does raise some questions. Because, yeah, they probably will uh, keep multi-lib enabled. But what if they do decide to actually drop 32-bit? Like, a significant chunk. Most of the Linux games out there nowadays are 32-bit still. So they still need those 32-bit libraries. It's like, mm, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to be keeping that multi-lib. I don't think they're going to be stupid enough to actually do that for at least another ten years. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure by then there'll be some sort of emulation solution that will allow it to just all work, and no one will know the difference, even though people are going to complain a whole bunch. But I mean, yeah. Even 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 systems like uh, distributions that are saying like Fedora that are dropping 32-bit as like a primary supported operating system still mm -hmm. support multi-lib because they're more than uh, more than enough aware, especially in the enterprise. That a lot of these applications don't get like recycled or refreshed very often, so you're gonna need that support. And mm -hmm. the last thing Nvidia wants to do is lose out on that enterprise market. Indeedly doodly. But speaking of emulation, we got some scummy news. 
Oh yes, we got a scum VM update from December seventeenth. It's we don't we don't hear from these guys all that often, but it's always cool when uh, you do. Uh, there, it's the tech behind that uh, Steam version of Manic Mansion that uh, you can now buy for four bucks. They have a bunch of new games, including The Cranston Mirror, Knock Knock, uh, Full Pipe, Gabriel Knight, <laughs> King's Quest, a uh, couple of the Leisure Suit Larrys, uh, the both Phantasmagoria games, which is actually kind of neat. Uh, plumbers Don't Wear Ties, you know, speaking of porno games, uh, Riven, Starship mm-hmm. Titanic, Dark Crystal, <laughs> just a bunch of games that will work out of the box. Uh, they give a nice little congratulations to the people who helped out with this release. And that's that's pretty much it. They got some improved uh, joystick support and some small enhancements to make things a little more usable. But if you want to play your old uh, point-and-click adventure games or text adventure games, Scum VM is the thing you definitely, definitely want to use. So good on, good on them. Riven is Scum. Riven is Scum. Well, that's something I totally did not... See. No, it, 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 it's 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 not it's not necessarily that it's using the Manic Mansion engine. It's just that they've expanded the functionality of this thing to the point where it's basically just a monolithic yeah. adventure game engine. Right. Because uh, Phantasmagoria Two is not Manic Mansion engine. No. At all. FMV yeah. baby. So what do we got up next? Uh, some a blast from the past, maybe, man. Oh yeah. Now this is what we do. Uh, so. Uh, Back in the days, you may remember when the uh, Star Wars um, prequels came out, uh, and there wasn't a whole lot to be said about those movies, but the pod racing thing sort of caught on, and there was a game, a genuinely good game, that came out of it. It was probably one of the best licensed AAA games of the time, and it was Star Wars Episode I Racer. You could have your own pod, you could upgrade it, you could uh, slightly tweak it a little bit, you didn't get a whole lot of customization into it. But now, now there's a couple of insane people on GitHub who said, you know what, we're going to make an open source re-implementation of this. So, the way they do it is actually slightly different than usual, because... It's a mix, as they describe it, it's a mix of console emulation and something like Wine. So you're not getting the Windows version working with uh, working on Linux, but you're actually getting something like a console emulator bringing it to um, x86 and having it call, having it make those native calls. So it's. It's available now. Uh, I don't know exactly how it works just yet because I don't have my... Uh, I'll tell you how it works. I'll tell you exactly how it uh, works. I got as far as building the Unicorn engine. When I got to the Unicorn engine, I said, <laughs> fuck this noise. I'm out. That was yeah. the last piece of kit because it got up to my um, my give a fuck a meter ran out of pegs. I said, all right, well, we yeah, tried. Uh, I wanted to go back and give it a try because that was like my first year, second year in university. Yeah, it was second year when we moved out. Mm-hmm. And we got a place, me and my flatmate, and this game was, he had it for his N64, and I think that he had one other game, GoldenEye. And we played the shit out of this because we were poor, and that was our entertainment thing. Yeah. Uh, the the Unicorn engine, by the way, is not so much an engine, but a CPU emulator. So it's it's all using open source tools. Uh, it's using SDL2, Glue, OpenAL, uh, and C++, or C11 anyways. So uh, that's all nice and interesting. Uh, yeah, I know the, the, the whole... I, I, don't, I don't know, because I, I remember playing this a bunch in arcades. Because they, they, the, they had the cabinet version of this. Hmm. And I, I, I would have imagined that this was like a port of the cabinet version. But no, I, I guess it's just using the... If it was the cabinet version, it would. it would just be MAME, though. Probably. Prob- probably, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's definitely a thing. As, as, like Pedro said, it was the only thing, good thing that came out of the Phantom Man ass. So, <laughs> uh, up mm-hmm. next though, we got we got to bring the thunder. Hey man, Rising Thunder. It was an experimental fighting game that uh, really didn't go anywhere. They turned off the service in 2016, but the source code for an open source version of Rising Thunder, uh, the server and all that, so they can get back to match made games online and all that. It's kind of coming back. It's going to be free, and it's going to stay that way forever. They still kind of early days, and I'm saying, hey, if when eventual Linux port 
which will show up because, come on, it's a fighting game and we kind of need that. Um, looking forward to it, man. I mean, this looks like yeah. it could be fun. And let's face it, we're not getting fucking Street Fighter Five, no matter how hard you want it's coming you guys it's coming i, I believe it's gonna really no, be released listen, listen motherfuckers listen the only reason i'm saying that's because universe likes to prove me wrong all right i'm i'm taking one for the team on this one brought to you by virtual programming yeah. but yeah i'm oh. not entirely sure that the uh natural selection 2 model of development is a good thing because well we've already had natural selection 2 and we've seen oops uh, we've seen how that one worked. So well, what? It, okay, yes. Here's one example of it working poorly. Therefore, uh, by extrapolating from that, <laughs> any other attempt along the same model just, will meet the same it's results. It's about an already released game getting that community-driven uh, development. Well, so it, so here, here's it, the it thing though: with, with so natural well. selection, though, that was more of a voice. This was we don't want to develop this anymore, mm -hmm. so we're gonna leave it to the community. This is more like this project's kind of abandoned, but people still want to play it. Right. So y'all y'all can maintain it. That 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 is entirely different. That usually has a lot more momentum behind a project that is like, and we're still going to charge you money for it too, but there's no official development on the project anymore. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the thing. Uh, we're not done talking about Vulcan because uh, we we're, mentioned this we're last we're week. No, we're not. Mm -mm. <laughs> the, it was getting spocked. It was getting shocked. And uh, Pedro is available now, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, so it was already available last week, but you had to build it from Sauce, which admittedly, I should have mentioned that, that I did actually build it from Sauce, uh, because I have had the, uh, the PPSS, PPE, uh, Git repo cloned on my local, uh, storage for a good long while. And I, every new Pedro, version that Pedro, comes out, Pedro. I keep building it and I keep seeing what's new. Yes. You, 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 you said PP. <laughs> yeah <laughs> fuck you <laughs> uh so um basically what um a lot of people were saying is that oh if i have the ppa see another pp uh <laughs> if i have the ppa installed and i download the 1.5.4 version i'm not getting vulcan what the hell's up with that so they were saying yeah we had some issues with our build locally so it's not available in the ppa build but it is available now they found what the issue was and now uh if even if you just install it from the ppa you can get uh some vulcans uh, with PP, SSPP. Okay, that's, that's the thing. You can do it. Um, so simple, <laughs> even an arch user could pull it off. Zero AD, it's fall, leaves are falling, and so is a little bit of information well, about what they've been up to. It's it's winter, not fall, man. They, they don't know how seasons work over at the Zero AD project. But yeah, they got a development report uh, telling us a little bit of what they're working on, uh, new stuff that will be coming in the new year. Um, they have uh, death animations for Zebus and siege units. Uh, they they have primary and secondary attacks for some units now, so you can they can like throw spears and then move in with short swords and shields. And they're removing a bunch of uh, legacy UI and AI cruft. So that, yeah, look, look at that. I, <laughs> that I'm getting a little right. irritated that, with that right. man because you know we got the horse, they got the cow. Oh, who would win? Cage well, fight. It, 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 yeah, it's not a cow, man. It's a zebu. It's different. It's different animal. They all taste shut, the same. Shut up. You like you would know. Um. Yeah, that, that's basically it. They list out a couple devs, what they're working on. Uh, lots of improvements. This is one of those like perpetually developed uh, titles where I, this is the model that distance needs to go under. It's like, yeah, we're just going to work on it forever, but you can, you know, buy it, support it, whatever. Uh, this is entirely free open source. It's a charity. You can donate money to it and get tax-free things. say shit like that. You're going to give Steam ideas for a new category. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 listen, it's gonna it's gonna happen whether I say it or not. Permanent I'm, access, I'm not lifetime access. I'm not. I'm not egotistical enough to yeah. assume that if I say something, that's just the root cause of it happening. That's that's all. That's all Pedro's bag. Okay. Speaking of Pedro's bag, how about we talk about some Neverwinter Nights? Oh yes. 
Neverwinter Nights and Hast Edition, it's a thing! I totally didn't drop like 40 pounds on the Head Start uh, Deluxe Edition or anything. Yes, I did. Oh, wait, uh, well, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, so uh, it is. Um, how, how much was that microphone going to cost you? All right, go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, admittedly, I did. Uh, don't care, just tell me that story. A couple of months ago, when it first came out. <laughs> but uh, no, I will. Um, Get a proper headset to do things remotely at some point, but uh, this is uh, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, and it is basically the Neverwinter Nights, the Bioware one you remember. Most of the original team, after EA bought them, they went, nope, fuck that business, and they started Beamdog, and Beamdog is now put out, like, um, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition, and now Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. Uh, so, uh, looking forward to The Witcher Enhanced Edition. <laughs> Never going to happen. Uh, uh, that's, so that's coming with the Basically, Zorius the big engine. one with this one... <laughs> yeah, the, the big one with this release is actually they got rid of most of the proprietary middleware. Uh, they got rid of... Um, uh, miles for audio and bank for video so basically all the audio now either comes over open mp3 or over AL, and the video comes uh, like the video cutscenes comes over webm that's actually pretty good bringing some current day technology to never winter nights which if you look back it came out in 2002 so yeah, I'm totally, absolutely freaking um, biased when it comes to Neverwinter Nights because it's all right, like my all right, that's cool, man. Um, all time. I, I I just think it's ironic that with Sword Coast Legends shutting down, uh, the the game that this the game that it was intended to replace is just coming back. It's it's mm-hmm. it's always funny. It's always uh, good to see. Let's, let's 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 stick a fork in it because much like the 32-bit era, it is over. Coming up next, uh, we're playing. We're we're throwing chairs that don't starve. I mean Minecraft. I mean Terraria. I mean Crashlands. I mean what? He'll save with a mighty hand. Every man, every woman, every child. It's a land named Crash. This is Crashlands, developed by Butterscotch Shenanigans, which is a dumb name for a game company. It's developed on Game Maker Studio. Um, what is it? Crashlands is a story-driven crafting ARPG set in an outlandish world of hidden magic and high technology. Fight and tame alien beasties, craft resources into menacing weaponry, befriend the locals, and go toe to chin with a world domineering maniac. Uh, so this is, I think, the first game we're actually getting through the Curator Connect, so thanks to the devs butterscotch shenanigans for mm-hmm. giving us this shenanigan what is it it's the chair qa zition this is the part of the show where we take a game we take a look at it we play it a little bit we maybe poke at it with a stick until we uncover some nasty nasty bugs to do a little qa that the developers should have done in the first place we do that by throwing chairs one chair means that it's garbage two chairs means that it's meh three chairs means that it's pretty good four chairs means that it's awesome we got our categories of doom makes it the working shiny sounds controls and fun we're doing a bit of a roundtable these days. So, starting it off, then it's monitor time. Yeah, man. I had, I had a very serious issue that I've only experienced with one other title, which also, it was a Unity title. And uh, monitor time out. I was talking to Pedro Thursday about my solution to this, because fortunately, we have the um, gerbil of silence that we use while we record, which is a quiet gerbil made for that. So, I keep that at my foot. While I'm back, lean back, playing the game with a Steam controller because the monitor times out when it normally times out if I'm not doing shit every 15 minutes. Causing me to get killed a lot more than I'd like to admit. Um, yeah, this is the only other game out of the 503 I currently own on Linux that has this issue. Also, you gotta create an account on their system in order to use stupid monkey cloud saves. Fuck that noise. Mm mm. Not happy with it, man. I'm going to say this thing doesn't work just because it times out on maybe it's a separate X screen issue. Possibly, I don't no. know. Nope. I don't. I don't run into that issue at all. Um, my only real issue with it is it loud. It fucking loud. It 
rip headphone users if you're starting up this game. Oh, yes. It will kill your eardrums nice and good. Also, I'll get to this a little bit more in the control segment, but they give you a little option in the menu to change your gamepad settings from A, B, X, Y to shapes. Mm -hmm. Like on this guy. <laughs> and uh, that shit isn't exactly right. It's a little, it's a little Bobby Hill. Uh, but on uh, Fedora 27... 64 bit with the i7 6700k and the gtx 980 Run, runs that issue for me yeah now over here with the ubuntu 60 uh 1604 64 bit with the gtx uh 1080 and the ryzen 5 1600 uh, it didn't time out, but then again, I am kind of a stickler when it comes to my monitors timing out as one of the things I always disable. It's if this box is running, I want it to keep running regardless of whether or not I'm touching the mouse or the keyboard or whatever. So yeah, no, it didn't really have any issues. So for me, it gets the full four. All, All right. right. I guess I should point out that I am running a uh, Ubuntu 17. Yeah, 1710 kernel 414. So. All right. Well, that's 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 three chairs for mix with the working. If we tally all that up. How about how about the shinny and the sounds? Pedro, uh, does does the sort of sprite aesthetic do anything for you? Uh, actually, for such a simple art style, there's definitely a lot of charm with this one. Um. I guess the dialogue also helps. There's not a there's not voice acting, so to speak. There's just some mumbling and some audio gibberish going on whenever characters speak. But uh, the sense of humor uh, in the dialogue does very much overlap with the LGC sense of humor. It's much more uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays than uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly proper, but it is very much there and. You know, as repetitive as the soundtrack is, I didn't find the need to immediately mute it. So, bonus soda. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. The soundtrack was kind of forgettable for me, right? It kind of just played in the background. The writing, the writing also didn't do anything. Like the all the jokes I read came across fell pretty flat. It's funny because the game has a flat aesthetic. <laughs> Speaking of which, it doesn't really do much for me. I don't, I don't know. This it really does feel like a mobile game. Yeah, well, I mean, it probably does. It looks like a well-done mobile game. I'll absolutely say that. Kind of digging that. And everything does scale well because it is a mobile game, you know. Graphics, they're nice, man. Colorful. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, nothing that's lazy about this whatsoever. And I should say, as a mobile game, this thing's won a fuckload of awards. Uh, I kind of think of it as a really overly mm -hmm. cutesy don't starve together type aesthetic out of the background. It beeps, it boops, it bops. Don't mind it. Don't necessarily need it in my ear pussies when I'm jamming out to it uh, for the 15 minutes that I can play it at a time. Yeah, so I, I, I guess you two, you two are giving it three. I'm, I wasn't as impressed as uh, the both of you. Mm -hmm. I gave it two. So that that totals out to uh, two three or to two chairs. Man, I can't count today. God damn. And how about some controls? So I mentioned before that it has a shapes uh, option in the menu button. Um, well, if you switch it to shapes, it will give you the button prompt for, say, the cross button on the DualShock controller. Mm -hmm. But it actually means the circle button. And after about five minutes of trying to sort it out, I just decided, hey, I'm going to switch it back to Xbox mode. And then just have the split second of press X. Oh, that actually means press square. Um, that's a little dumb, guys. If you're gonna include that option, you might wanna, you know, make it work. Beyond beyond that, everything else works reasonably well. The lock-on mechanic can get a little weird when you can't like unlock from the thing that you're currently targeted, but that's kind of a minor nitpick. Yeah, right under that, I use the Steam controller, Areola controller. You know it, you love it. You might have one yourself. Uh, worked really well with that. Everything completely mapped out. A lot of shit to click. Still, again. Nothing I had to futz mm -hmm. with. It's there on the screen. You do it. Easy to remember where it's where your business is. I like that. The only downside, and it's kind of a wicked annoying downside on this business, is the auto lock slash aim thingy. Yes, that is a technical term we use in the game industry. And it 
clearly shows the mobile roots with the original touch interface, which I'm talking about when you're facing things, it kind of has an auto lock system, which can get a little fucky when something goes across something else that you're trying to fuck up and it won't happen. Or you're trying to throw a wrench and it's like, you can't throw a wrench at that. I'm like, why? Cause I've auto locked onto this thing. It's more of an annoyance than it is actually anything breaking. So yeah, I'm going to say the control is pretty much working with this. Yeah, no, absolutely. The uh, Steam controller, the mistress over here, thank you very much, Locked On It. Uh, everything was immediately recognized out of the box, and it worked. Uh, I guess also keeping all the labels on screen for what you need to press for things to happen is probably a good thing because it gives you less of a margin of error. So for me, uh, yeah, the auto lock thing was annoying at times but it's just a matter of repositioning your character most of the times and it will sort itself so i can't really ding in a chair for that i i definitely can so i i gave it three then gave it three you gave it four <laughs> Tell us out to three chairs uh who wants to jump on the fun wagon hey man I, i'm gonna take this fun wagon all out of fun town man because what do you got what do you got? You got something that's made for fucking grinding, let's face that. There's a lot of grinding here, and that's what this game's about. Something you can pick up, fuck around for a little bit, put down, and continue out your day. It's almost like, yes, that's right, it's a mobile game. Um, there's a fun little time waster hiding in here, you know, behind an egregious technical blunder, at least on my end, and that's the monitor timing out, and that really sucks. Uh, also... If we're going to be honest, uh, doubling the price from the mobile version, kind of a dick move, Brad. Um, and you can't really tell me this because you spent a lot of time reworking the game for PC because that's a fucking lie. You know, if that's the case, I wouldn't have, you know, I actually would have out of the box a Steam cloud save like any other modern game made in the last since forever. Instead of having to sign up for your bullshit service. Admittedly, it's free, but it's not inside Steam. Fuck that noise. I don't know you. I'm not trusting you with that. So, um, yeah, I kind of noped out of this business after about an hour of playtime. Because I think the second time we've all fought the Wumpuses, and it was the second Wumpus or whatever the fuck those mother plato, mm -hmm. uh, Pippo, Plato, fucky, stompy me's are, uh, just timed out at the wrong time and I got smashed to death. When you get killed pretty easy, you just teleport back, you grab your stuff. But that's really annoying, dying because I couldn't tap or kick my damn dribble quick enough because we have these YOLO business monitors that cycle through genuinely 900 inputs. And the last fucking one is display port, mini display port. Uh, so you get, you got to be quick on the draw. And if you're not, you're just dead. If you're in the middle of combat. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, but I mean, basically, this is don't starve, right? It, it's mm -hmm. the exact same formula. You well, I, yeah. actually, not even because don't starve has the actual mechanic where you need to find food. This one, your food is just your health, like uh, the sort of lazily done crafty survival games, and everything just devolves into go there, get this thing, or go there, kill Grinding. that, get this thing, mm -hmm. or go there, kill that, build mm -hmm. this thing. It's some combination of all that, and it's not really engaging it just gets super monotonous the grind doesn't feel like it's building up somewhere when you get blueprints they're just for like what 90 percent of the blueprints you get are for the um or that you just find are for like cosmetic items useless like bullshit shelves yeah ex exactly it's like no i want to i if i'm going to play a game like this i kind of want to progress up the tech tree so that i can be a badass with a laser gun instead of a guy with a sword literally made out of grass um I mean, and that's the thing. The game doesn't really do anything particularly original, which is fine because you can have unoriginal games that have solid gameplay mechanics, but this is just really mediocre, and that is the ultimate crime of this it game. Is. Is that's boring. I, I Not engaging at all. Yeah, I, I and feel I really, to play it. I really do like the idea behind these these kinds of games, uh, the RPG adventure game where you need to craft your way to success, it's probably the... Well, uh, I was probably the only one here that actually truly enjoyed Planet Explorers to any significant degree. And 
Um, I enjoyed Planet Explorers a lot more than I enjoyed Minecraft back in the day. That said, uh, Planet Explorers realized just how grindy these kinds of games can get. Uh, and before you even get to make any significant impact in the world, before you even get to be powerful against the enemies that are around you, all the creatures in the world and what have you, uh, it realizes that you need to grind for a lot of shit. And Planet Explorers did a really awesome thing where it made the medial tasks slightly... They made them feel slightly less like a medial task and more like you were actually making progress in the game because the quests that you were given actually got you the stuff that you needed in order for you to craft whatever it is that you would need for the very next quest. That realization of the crafting um, crafting system, the improvement uh, or the lessening of the grinding, as it were, uh, is something that didn't really seem to happen in Crashlands. Because, okay, maybe it's the uh, mobile game DNA, uh, maybe it's the, the whole, okay, so you're stuck at work for most of the day, so you do some of the menial stuff, you tap some things, you grind for some of the materials, and then when you get home, you get to finish that quest because you actually get to kill the enemy, or you get to go to a place and explore a little bit of the map, and maybe kill some of the enemies around there. That is what this game feels like. It's, um, I can see what it is, but I don't really like it. This sort of design doesn't really have a place when you're playing a PC game. Uh, I, I don't really think of myself as a purist when it comes to video games, but certain mediums do tend to lend themselves better to different styles of games. And Crash Lens, while not being absolutely terrible, doesn't really shine on PC. So it's kind of middle of the road there. Mm. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You're, you're oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. right. All right. Oh, that, that, that's um, that's one share from Ben and myself. Two chairs from Pedro. Tally all that up. One chair for fun. We didn't really have that much for playing the game. Tally this whole nonsense up, and we get uh, two chairs, which is a not sure if want on the chair position. O meter. O tron. I'm going to say OG, two chairs with a heavy solid. slant towards the down direction because the price, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, fifteen, yeah. fifteen, twenty bucks. It was for this. very pricey. Yeah, it, it, yeah, especially like it's almost twenty bucks Canadian. That is, I, I would maybe pay, pay five for this at most. I, I, um, listen, I, I could see nine ninety nine for this, and like, yeah, all right, if it's if it's your jam, you like this type of stuff, maybe that. But yeah, coming up on double of that, like seriously, just get it on mobile for like six quid, and you're done. Yeah, I like. It's it's just another unremarkable survival crafty game in a sea of other ones that do the exact same thing mm. to varying degrees of success. It's there, there, there's not much in here you haven't seen before. Maybe maybe you dig the aesthetic. Maybe you just like the maybe you know the devs and you want to support them or something. It's not it's not really my cup of tea. Takes out. All right. Well, coming up next. Uh, we talk about the Deutschland, and um, I, I, I guess someone wants me to fix their relationship. So that'll that'll we'll see how that goes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the well. It's just about time we wrap this thing up because it's been going on long enough. You're done with us. We're pretty much done with Linux gaming for this week. So if you'd like to scream in our direction, maybe give us some news, maybe give us some hate mail. You can do that by going over to LinuxGameCast.com. Just fill in the contact form. It's pretty easy. Make sure LGC Weekly is the thing that you pick on the little drop down thing. Or if you'd like to ask Jordan for some relationship advice, you can do that too. We actually have some of that this week, go figure. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's probably the best way that you have to get in touch with us there's also youtube comments sure leave us a comment on youtube and we will probably see it we will probably get back to you right then and there but the most important thing is if you're a game developer if you're contacting us be it from the uh, contact form or the steam curator connect thing make sure to include three copies or 
a bill that we can share amongst the three of us, that is probably the best way to have your game looked at instead of made fun of. But then again, there's no promises that we won't do both. Also, yes. Such up face. Yeah. Oh, somebody screen capped that. Uh, coming up first, uh, Tim writes in. He says, so happy you got around to that Amazon Deutschland affiliate link, which is there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Rudy requested that. Now at last, I can order such LGC-worthy items, such as 10-pound tin of pea soup, while also supporting your train wreck of a show. Mary Flatulence is, is, and uh, just to prove he's not fucking around, man, he he, he included. Listen, if, if, if you're gonna do that remake of The Exorcist, you got to do it right. Oh shit! All right, let's see. Convinced still German. Uh, Arasco P stew one pack. Blah blah blah. What is it? 40, 4.6 kilograms That's of pea fucking soup. pea soup? That's a lot of pea soup. Let's see. See more details. Google, Google Translate said that was pea soup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says uh, pea, pea stew contains celery, milk, may contain traces of wheat, soy, mustard, milk, and egg. Uh, so so you, you can't oh, eat Oh, doing the allergen either. thing. I don't know. Let's see. What else? Uh, I don't know. How, how, how many calories in the light year of this stuff are there? I, I'm just curious. Uh, Amazon D is not the manufacturer of the goods is offered on this website unless expressly stated. Um, pork no, and you vegetables. Can, you can get like minestrone. You can get all sorts of. Wow, you can get like 4.3 pounds of minestrone soup. Yeah. That's, uh, huh. that's, uh, that's a yeah. thing. Well, oh, well, it. it <laughs> Damn it. It, it! it contains forty-two percent peas. Well, well, welcome back to Linux Soupcast, ladies and gentlemen. We're we're throwing chairs at uh, German split pea soup. All right, that that's thing. Uh, that that's everyone's German lesson for this week. Uh, feel free to use that how, Creative Commons. How, 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 how to order five kilograms of soup? All, All right. right. I, 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 up, up next, we got we got uh, some Truggy. Truggy, he has he his heart is in need of my 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 gentle hands, and he says, "Dear Jordan, please help me. There's a really nice girl I like called Pedro. She's on a couple of Linux-based podcasts. She apparently lives in the UK. <laughs> There's just something about her giggle that I find really attractive. The problem is." Whenever she talks about Brexit, I want to headbutt her and her pretty face. Should I tell her that the British people have decided to govern themselves <laughs> rather than be ruled by a bunch of unelected technocrats in another fuck mothering country? This, this doesn't, that doesn't mean that everyone voted for breakfast is either racist or stupid. That's just an oversimplified cope out. Everyone that is intelligent enough to know anything about the process of governing local, <laughs> national, or international voted for Brexit because it will be better for Britain once the rest of Europe stops fucking with us. Wow. All of a sudden, this went from relational relationship <laughs> advice to like a nationalist rant that, that's that's like maybe that's like maybe the fourth time that's happened to me <laughs> should, so uh should i should i say nothing and just leave her to her opinions <laughs> love troubles with also from trugs well truggy i would say in that case you should actually just go over and just like have a bunch of hate sex and mm -hmm. may, maybe you'll come to an agreement Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll 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 decide to Brexit in inside Pedro. I, I don't know. I'm just saying, man. You you got to look at it like that's how that's how you resolve Brexit is hate sex. I mean, we 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 just solved uh, an <laughs> island's issue. I don't issues. know who this girl. <laughs> I don't know who this girl is, but uh, <laughs> she sounds like she has her head on straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Im the important thing is that when Britain finally exits the, I apologize for creating this <laughs> show, ladies and gentlemen. This, this one's no, on no, no, no. Th this is all on you. You knew this would happen. The split, the split second you added that fucking drop down to the hate mail, you knew that this is gonna happen. So again, make sure that you fully disconnect England from the continental shelf and let it drift. Maybe they'll join up with Australia and become like Just some sort of country-based cocaine bullfrog. 
Because of that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, let's give the music. You'd always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time where we're doing this nonsense, putting it all up in your face, organs. If you want to get in touch with me, just at Vince Stone on the Twitter nights, plus Vince Stone. Type in Vince Stone. You're going to find it. It's going to be terrifying. Isn't that right, Frank? That's right. All right. I'm Jordan. You can find me just fixing all the geopolitical issues in the world <laughs> and... I, I, I don't know, hate fucking people <laughs> at the Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Spung on Google Plus. And then there's this beautiful, beautiful young girl. And I am Pedro Mateos. Yes. You can find me at Unaccounted For on Twitter, which if you actually Google for Pedro Mateos, uh, that's the first link that shows up if you're in the UK. I don't know how the fuck that happened. I've only been here for like, what, four months? Five? It just means that hell. you're not getting another job but, hey, after this. There it is. Uh, also, I'll tell you exactly. Little listen, little man, I'll tell you what happened. I mean, uh, listen, what I said, I'm going to get you fired. I'm going to get you fired, son. I, I had to get your rankings up. I've spent some money. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's going to get fired out of a cannon into the Atlantic. That's what's going to happen. So, um, ultimately, uh, I think the one thing we learned this evening is uh, definitely LGC Weekly, now with 42% peace. Enus, green, sweet penis. Country goodness and green penis. Isn't that right? Let's give credit. Four, four, I'm four point, to penis, four point six kilograms of penis, man. <laughs> Aren't we all? Hava nagila, hava nagila, hava. So is that like the uh, Christmassy version of Jason Statham? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Stand up. Stanta. Stan. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Mary Statham. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You know. You know. What? What about Stan Statham? What about Stan him? and Dan Statham? <laughs> don't 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 talk shit about the Stan and Dan Statham. <laughs> <laughs> The Stan, the Stan and Dan Statham tram. They're they're they're, they're in a band because they can. I guess, man. You say so. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, he's in there twice you, you, now. You, you get you get a you get a double Maddie multiplier. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Admiral JT, Lutris.net, Namag, Dano. Latest and greatest. Peace out, bitches. Dead. Done fire. Five dudes. Peace.